Guys, it's a hybrid cloud platform, knife.io. They're doing $25,000 a month today in revenue up from 1000 a month just a year ago. Their pre-seed round, they closed a year ago for half a million bucks at a five over a $5 million valuation. Looking to raise 500 k now, targeting a $10 million valuation. We'll see if they can get it done. 25 customers paying on average $1,000 per month. A team size of 20 folks with eight engineers. Hey folks, my guest today is Nita Sahir. She's been blessed with many empowering opportunities in the past 15 years of her career. career. Her corporate experience made her extremely passionate about technology and paved the way for the world of startups. She's now working on NIFE, Knife, Io, not just for teaching her how to create technological impact, but opening possibilities and becoming an example for others, uh, specifically others, uh, other women in tech. It's an application lifecycle management platform. Nita, you ready to take us to the top? Yes, 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 yes. Um, thank okay. you so much for having yeah. me you, you bet. So when did you launch the company? And tell us a story about a customer that's using you today. Oh, we started off po- 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 uh, peak of pandemic, 2020, 2020 May. And uh, yeah, I was stuck in Singapore in a room and then I didn't know what else to do because it was not my um, country of origin. And then my coach advised me that I should start a company and that's what happened. Uh, this two things are that simple, but yeah. So um, you wanted a story of one of a customer who's using it? Correct. So we have an interesting music app that's using our platform and they're doing this to live stream um, uh, their studio, the, the production work. So different musicians from different locations are actually jamming together and they have deployed their application through Knife. So that's really interesting. That's very cool. And so what does the average customer pay you per month today? Average customer pays anywhere between $1,000 um, to about $1,500. Per month? Yes. And what do they get for 1000 a month? Uh, they get a lot of automations done in uh, in a single go so they can deploy their applications not just that um, also they get performance metrics related to the applications who's using it how they're using it and how they can go ahead and um, scale their applications to different regions and locations as well so your web website says the fastest way to build manage deploy and scale any application securely globally with auto deploy from git zero devops servers or infrastructure management so should we look at this like robotic process automation software you can look at it as an application lifecycle management software. Well, make it not so buzzwordy. Okay, make it real for my audience. What does that actually mean? <laughs> it actually means your applications need a place to stay. So we help them reach their the exact location where they want to live. Uh, so my example that I always give is Airbnb for servers, right? So we have a whole bunch of servers across the world. And we know what the the kind of ecosystem and infrastructure each of the servers have. So we help your applications go and live in the location that makes more sense for them. Not just for vacationing, but yeah, to um, survive and to breathe. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. And you got going in 2020. How many customers do you have today? We have about 25 odd customers. We are still okay. very early, I would say. Yes. And so 25 customers paying 1000 a month means you're doing about $25,000 a month in revenue? Yes, we are. That's great. And where were you exactly one year ago so we can calculate growth rate? <laughs> we, we were at $1,000. That's about it. Exactly. Tell me that story. How'd you get your first customer? Uh, so our first customer came from Warm Reference uh, primarily. Uh, so Come from we what? Knew- uh, a warm reference. Warm reference, okay. Yes, th- that was the easy part. I think getting the first customer was not that difficult. I think the difficult part was getting the second, third, fourth, fifth customer because then we had to establish patterns. We had to see uh, what our exact ICP is, who is our persona, which markets do we target because we were all over the place, really. So uh, I think we a, a year ago, we were still doing pre and spray, I would say. But then identifying the first, uh, getting my second or third customer became super, super, super critical. So mm-hmm. I think um, it was a lot of, um, what do I say, marketing effort, a lot of sales effort, a LinkedIn reach outs. Don't ask. It's It's been like a great learning process. Yes. And how many folks today are full-time at the company? We're about 20 at this time, point of time. 20. How many of those are engineers? <laughs> Eight. Eight. Okay. And do you code? I do code. Yes. I'm a tech there. founder turned whatever business person. Yes. That's awesome. Are you a sole founder? Or do you have a co-founder? I'm a solo founder. Yes. Oh, I love that. Congrats. It's so rare. Um, did you have people saying, oh, Nita, you've got to get somebody else. And you said, no, I'm going to do it myself. Like, What was the thinking there? Investors said, you need to find someone. You're going to go crazy. 
I had my coaches who said that, you know, I'll go crazy. I did try finding people. It's not that I didn't, but then it just didn't work out. So, so at one point of time, I said, you know, just, just forget about finding a co-founder if I have to build this. And, and the drama around finding a co-founder is also crazy, right? And, you know, um, whatever. So I said, either I'm going to build a company or I'm going to find a co-founder. So I said, Chuck, finding a co-founder, let me build this. So what? of course there were, there were a few investors who didn't worry about the fact that I was a solo founder even. Mm-hmm. What drama? The drama was a person coming in asking for stake, not wanting to work, and then you know the whole thing about hey, I am, I am the CEO of whatever telecom organization. I'm coming down to your company, so I need to get this much pay, and I don't know what not. So um, I think. The co-founder conflict part, I think probably I can write a book on it. So yes, <laughs> that's that story. Oh, what's going on there, YouTube? Good to see you guys. Now imagine this. You love watching these interviews with SaaS founders, but imagine if we took all of the valuation data out from over 2,807 interviews I've done manually. Saves you a lot of time. Well, we've done this. We've built it into the beautiful interface inside of FounderPath. Check this out. I'll show you how you can access this in a second, but you log in, you connect your Stripe account, you see your valuation real time, you can see what it changed over the past 88 days, and even set goals for valuation this year. Now, the secret valuation is there's many different ways to value a SaaS business. So the reason you're going to see three or four different valuations inside of your FounderPath dashboard, this is all free, by the way, is because depending on who's doing the buying of your SaaS company, you're going to get a different valuation. A VC is going to pay a different valuation. Private equity firm is different. If you're going to do a minority sale, that's different. And if you sell the whole business, that's a different valuation. You can see all those when I hover over here. Right, so the teal is what a VC would pay, yellow is what private equity, and red is if you sold the whole thing outright. Now what's cool about this is this is not built off random data. Again, you guys hear these interviews on YouTube, all these data are built from real-time valuation data points founders share with us on the show. So traction, 1.2 million, seed round, 3.7 raise, they sold 22% of their business. Go in here and filter by the event. Maybe you only wanna see companies that have sold the whole business. Well, here are a bunch that have been acquired, the valuation and the multiple. Maybe you're going out right now and you're raising your seed round. Well, go in here and look at all this recent seed deals that went down, what they raised, what valuation they raised at, and what percent that they sold. There's never been a larger data set of SaaS valuations than what you can get now inside of FounderPath, and we're thrilled to bring it to you. All right, we're going to go back to the YouTube video here in a second, but if you want to check this tool out, if you want to jump in and sign up, you can check it out for free to get your valuation at this link, this link, founderpath.com forward slash products forward slash valuations. Or if you go to founderpath.com and hover over products, click on get your valuation here and go ahead and sign up to give it a whirl. Again, all that valuation data live right inside the platform. I hope to see you there. All right, let's jump back into the interview. That's great. You mentioned investors. Have you raised capital or have you bootstrapped? Yes, yes, we've raised. We've raised about um, half a million, close to half a million at this point of time. Okay, when did you close the round? We closed the round in August last year. Okay, 500,000 and you maybe call that your seed round? We are about to raise a seed round, yes. Okay, so that was your pre-seed round for 500k. Was- most most folks in their pre-seed will sell, you know, 20% of the company. Is that how about about how much you sold? Uh, we sold about 10% of a company. Okay, 10. So you were at about 5 million valuation. Yes, we're about a 5.5 million valuation, yes. How did you convince folks to give you a $5 million valuation, you know, in the middle of 2022? Markets are going a bit crazy, you know, you're early on. How did you get that valuation done? couple of things one is the 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 topic of what i'm selling or the the product that i was working on or which is now ready itself had a lot of uh, potential especially um the layers that we're building on next uh, this year and the year after that are more focused on 5g so that's one part of it the second aspect of things is that we had um a, a lot of sales coming in, you know, mid uh, early last year to through the time I was raising, we already had a few customers and we had good reviews. That was the second thing. The third is, I think, come what may, our execution is super strong. Um, a small lean team with um, really low burn. So I think the investors uh, kind of appreciate What is low that. burn? Uh, we do about 10K burn. <laughs> That's about it. 
Okay, so you're profiting monthly right now about 15,000 a month. Yes. That's great. And so if you have profits, I mean, why raise money? Why give up 20%, 10% of your company? Yes. So um, there are a couple of things. The amount of scale in which we want to um, build the next part of the product is huge. The second thing is the kind of customers that we want to capture, the enterprise-based customers who have a slightly higher paying capacity. Uh, the, the sales procedure is way too long. What we have right now is easy targets, easy customers. And if we continue doing this, our volumes will be higher, but our um, um, the, the purse is going to be uh, leaner. So we want to uh, ensure that we target the big accounts, long LTV, um, you know, have that in place as well. So this is these are some of the things that we we really need to accelerate growth into. So th- this and is you what mentioned we, you're raising now. How much are you targeting to raise? We're targeting about 500k. That's about it uh, because we're already um, a little bit uh, revenue positive. So what we want to do is um, put in that money from the uh, the kitty that we're saving every month plus the money that we're raising into building something uh, bigger than what we have right now. And what valuation are you targeting on this new round? <laughs> Um, I I mean, it's a conversation that I probably have with my investors. If that is okay, I'll skip this one. <laughs> well, well, I guess the reason I'm asking is the equity markets are really hard right now, right? So, and also like if you're profiting 15,000 a month already, it seems strange that you would go into a very tough equity market to try and raise 500,000 bucks instead of just staying heads down and focusing on growth and profits. So it's a call that we're still taking, but um, what the thought process right now is there are there are features that we want to build in that are more important at this point of time, like the whole decentralization of web. And so what we do today is distribution of applications when we say application lifecycle management, but the, de- the whole decentralization topic is slightly more bigger and more important. And that's the reason why we want to build it now. And if we wait for another year or so, then it's going to be slightly problematic. The second thing is, I I do agree that uh, the uh, the market is really low, and uh, not just low. It's the funding winter, right? And winter has been here to stay for a longer time. So, um, but um, if we don't build it out now, then it's going to be there's going to be more competition coming in next year. So keeping that in mind, we just want to raise a small check right now in order to continue building um. Um, our efforts into the the new part of the product and uh, you know scaling them scaling the product from that perspective. Um, I mean that that's what that's the rationale behind it. Really, it's not that we want to raise like a two mil or three mil. We don't want to do that much, and we don't um, necessarily think that any investors would be willing to put in that much uh, money as well. So, if an investor comes to you today and says, "Oh my gosh, you know, I love what you're building. Here's five hundred k, but I want thirty percent of the company," how do you respond? Oh no, I, I don't think I don't think that's that's going to be possible. Evaluation. Oh, but Nita, you just said that you really wanted money because you have to invest in these products, features that you need right now. Because if you wait a year, it's going to be bad. This is why I asked the question about Nita. This is why I no, asked about valuation. On. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, dude. No, 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 no. We're very strict on our valuation. So, um, where we value ourselves right now is about ten million. So if we if we don't uh, get a valuation in par with what we have raised previously, it's going to be really bad for our previous investors. So we're not well, going to. How let do that. you match that though? I mean, those investors last year, when you're doing a thousand bucks a month in revenue, I mean, this is sort of silly to do, but at a five million post money, you could argue is a four hundred ten x multiple on your revenue, which is sort of silly to do that early stage, right? So what do you mean when you say it's got to match the last valuation we raised at? Well, no, I don't mean it has to match the last valuation. What I mean to say is it's going to be really not fair for my previous investors if I give away 30% of my company for 500K. So that, that's what I'm trying to say. It's not going to be fair for anyone involved even in, in the company. So yeah, but life's def- not fair. There's a ton of companies right now doing down rounds where the current investors are getting way more than investors last year. See, if, if we run in, uh, Nathan, frankly, if we run into a situation like that, um, I think I'm just going to back off and say, hey, it's okay. Let's continue uh, working on what we have because we're not in a bad shape at all. Let's continue doing that and then, you know, see how we can scale with whatever resources we have because we've been lean and we can be leaner than what we have been so far. So that would be the call, but uh, definitely not downsiding. I mean, the valuation of talking about 30%, 500K is is actually, it's not it's not suitable for anyone. Yeah. But this is why I'm pushing you. Uh, I don't know. Like some of the top companies right now can't get rounds done at valuations they like, and so that's why when I pushed you and said, "Do you? Why do you need this money now? I think you build a great company that has profits. Why not reinvest profits?" That's why I was asking the question. So we'll see what happens. I mean, do you have a term sheet from somebody right now on the terms that you want? 
Uh, we don't have a term sheet. We do have very uh, late stage conversations going on with two of the investors. So uh, from that perspective, our valuation isn't as low as what you're saying. So I think I think we're in good shape uh, from that perspective. Well, I hope you get it done without having to sell a bunch of the company. Let me just put it that way, okay? All right. On that note, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Nita, number one, what's your favorite book? My favorite book is Mindset. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Uh, CEO, um, actually, I'm not following any any CEO as much. I think, uh, uh, yeah, that that would no be problem. Bad. Number three, yeah. what's your favorite online tool for building the company? Uh, my favorite on, on, at this point of time, it's Active Campaign because we do a ton of email marketing, CRM, and so on, so on and so forth. So it's Active Campaign. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Oh my God, um, good a good night's sleep is four hours. Uh, that's not healthy. Yeah, but I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a solo founder. What can I do? Um, yeah, some days I do land up sleeping for uh, 10 hours, but then it's really not healthy what I do. Yes. Okay, well, there you go. So you catch it. We just don't want to perpetuate the notion that if you want to call yourself a good founder, it means you only have to sleep for four hours a night. I, so- I wish I could sleep seven hours per night. I really wish I could do that, but uh, I've just not been able to do it. You just, well, you just catch up. You sleep four hours and you sleep 10 hours sometimes. So that makes sense. All right. And what's your situation? Married, single, kiddos? Um, I'm single. I have, I do have cats though. So yeah. Cats. Okay, great. And Nita, do you mind me asking how old you are? I am 37. 37. Last question. Something you wish you knew when you were 20. Something I wish I knew I, when I was in 20, I think I was too serious, very nerdish. So I wish I knew how to have more fun, which (laughs) I now know. Guys, it's a hybrid cloud platform, knife.io. They're doing $25,000 a month today in revenue up from 1000 a month just a year ago. Their pre-seed round, they closed a year ago for half a million bucks at a five over a $5 million valuation. Looking to raise 500 k now, targeting a $10 million valuation. We'll see if they can get it done. 25 customers paying on average $1,000 per month. A team size of 20 folks with eight engineers. Nita, thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you so much, Nathan. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers. They try and do a deal live, and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash Slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right, I'll be in the comments. See ya.